Greetings and salutations my friends, welcome to How To YouTube, a complete guide. Today in episode 11, we're going to be talking about the money. Money, 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 money. Um, so we're going to, along with like YouTube ad revenue and what you can do to help, you know, increase that. We're also going to be talking about other ventures that you can do, such as merchandise. As you grow, you might get offered sponsored content, sponsored videos, and also Patreon. So we're going to talk in detail a little bit about each one of those things and how you can use it to the best of your ability. Let's get on with it. Money, 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 money. Money. Welcome to my continuation of the how to youtube guys and this is all about cash monies all that cash monies it's the reason why everyone does youtube no it's not it's not really and it shouldn't be because it's probably the wrong place um if you're in it for that but today we are going to talk about youtube ad revenue i'm going to be i'm quite open and honest about what i do on youtube i'm i will show you exactly how much i earn how much i make um, I'm also going to talk about Patreon, how much I make on there, and, and just tips and tricks to, to make sure you get the most out of those things. We're also going to talk about stuff like um, doing brand deals and sponsorships and merchandising and stuff like that. Really useful stuff. Most of this doesn't really apply to when you first get going. Obviously, the YouTube ad revenue does, um, but the sponsorships don't really turn up when you've got 10 subscribers and, and Patreon. But let, let, let's, let's go through it. So we're going to start off um, just talking about YouTube ad revenue. So you can see I've been doing YouTube um, for one and a half years, and I've earned $4,223. And as you can see here, for like... I don't know, 10 months of that, at least half of that, I made barely anything, maybe $50 total. So for almost a year's work, I have I would have made $50. And, you know, that's why I say about if you're getting into YouTube for the money, don't do it. You know, I'm going to show you now what um, I currently make. Um, so on the analytics, there is two sections. There's a revenue and there is also an ad rates page. The ad rates is basically what YouTube pays you for your particular type of videos. Depending on what you do, um, what type of videos you make, your ad um, rate will be very differently. Because if you think about it from the other side, companies that want to advertise on YouTube might not want to advertise on certain subjects. We've had the recent adpocalypse and stuff. They might want to add, you know, they might, they might want to place ads on videos that appeal to the 24 to 35 year old demographic which have the most sort of spare cash monies um, and not the under 13s which have to beg their parents sort of thing. Um, it is against the terms and conditions of YouTube to show your ad rates page or to share your ad rate because it's, it is private to you. But what I can show you is just the general actual physical money that I'm getting paid. Um, so let's zip this up to where I actually started my channel. <clears throat> Just so we can get a little bit of a clearer look. So like I said, you know, almost almost a year of this has been has been pretty low money. I had a good day then, 30th of June, cashing it in, $6.34. Um and then grow growing your money as it as it goes. So we had a good day then. We got $35 that day. Nice. Nice. Um I'm currently running around $500 a month um, on my ad revenue. It fluctuates massively, and there's nothing you can do about it, depending on the time of the year. Just before Christmas is really good because they want to advertise. Obviously, with the recent ongoing problems with YouTube, it did drop down for a bit, but has since gone up. Like when we had the what's called the adpocalypse, when lots of big advertisers withdrew from YouTube um, because ads were being played on sort of some dodgy, bad videos. Uh, it sort of dropped right down there to sort of this level, but now it's climbing back up as the advertisers come back and as, as YouTube work on it. There's not much you can do to affect this. Obviously, ad placement in videos is very important. So when you um, upload a video, you get to choose to monetize it. I would suggest anyone that's starting a new YouTube out, people say maybe you shouldn't monetize for the first couple of months. Um... I would say monetize straight away. The reason being is that people 
are used to having adverts on YouTube, right? It's a very, very common thing. If they're the sort of person that's that bothered by adverts they would have, or commercials, they would have already used ad block and stuff like that. So I would say, you know, use it straight away, but don't overdo it. So in the on your videos, you've got the monetization tab and you can choose what to have. So <clears throat> um, I basically, this is the way I do it. Um, generally speaking on my videos is that I will have a skippable ad at the beginning so they're the ads that start it's maybe a 30 second ad and after five seconds you can just skip it um, and then I'll have one at the end just in case anybody leaves their computer on not really but you can you can untick this you don't really need this and I also have those overlay ads which basically pop up um, here you know just on the bottom of the screen occasionally from time to time um, the way the ad revenue works on YouTube is that you only get paid if somebody doesn't skip an ad. So let's say Nike pay for a 30 second ad on your on your video. If everybody skips as soon as they can, which is after five seconds, you don't get paid anything. So it's you only get paid if somebody watches the ad. Say, likewise, you only get paid when one of these little pop up ones in the lower middle of the screen. If somebody clicks on it to go to the website, that's when you get paid. So you don't just get paid automatically. Um, I think that's the best way to do it. I don't tend... You can add, add adverts in between. If it, like my Most of my videos are quite long, but I don't want to piss people off. It's, this one's a 26-minute video. I could easily put an ad break in the middle here. I, I just don't see... Because there's a balance between trying to make some money but pissing off people. If there's too many ads and your video's not good enough, they'll go, oh, fuck, another ad. Oh, I can't be asked to watch the rest of this, right? You, I guarantee if I put an ad into the, what say, right in the middle of this, then if we, if we went back to look at our view duration video where we see the graph of when people leave, you'd see quite a little, another little drop-off at that point where another ad comes on. So I had them at the beginning because that's the standard. I have them at the end just for people that want to support my channel and want to watch ads um, or just leave it on to play to the end. But I'm not going to sort of spam the crap out of people. And I think it's very important that you don't either. Um, but there you go. That's ad revenue in a nutshell. So in this section, we're going to talk about other ways of making money on YouTube, whether that's sort of brand deals or free games, sponsorships, Patreon and things like merchandise. A little, so I'll only talk about um, the sponsorships and brand deals briefly because generally speaking, they're more targeted towards much bigger ta channels i do get the occasional email from companies offering um i've been given a few games to review and because i'm at the size where um i did a video for game i think i got paid a hundred pounds for that video plus i got fifa 17 and some t-shirts merch stuff and everything like that Generally speaking, those sort of brand deals don't really come along until you're sort of bigger, whether you'll get proper sponsorships. Um, and once you're at that size, it's a lot easier to negotiate and stuff like that. But you will occasionally, if you're a gaming channel or a makeup channel, you might get sent free stuff. And what I would say with that, with that sort of thing, like in my case, I get sent the occasional free game to do a review on or just to try out. Um, if you're going to make videos on it, generally speaking, there's no exchange of money. You basically get the product free and you make a video about it. First thing to do, if any company ever says to you, you know, don't say anything horrible about it. Say, I don't want it then. Make sure that you're, if they're going to give you a, an item that you are totally free to say whatever you want about it. And in the video itself, you must say that you got the item for free. Or if you did get paid, you got paid for it. And in, I would even go so far to put in the title ad in the description that this is a sponsored video and all that stuff to make sure you're legally fine to do so. Um, and like I said, if you, if anybody, if any company came to me and said, look, we want you to do a product review, but we need you to be positive, we'll pay you 500 quid. I'll tell them to fuck right off because it's going to be obvious, right? If you're playing a shit game and saying how good it is, it's it's going to be clear to everyone and then you're going to lose any sort of confidence that people have in you that, you, that you're honest and a good person because you're just making shit up for money. So any sort of deals like that, I would say no chance whatsoever. But if somebody wants to send me a game to review, I will happily do so. I won't promise to make a video on it. 
um, everyone that's got in contact with me said, yeah, I'll happily, you know, I'll give it a go. Um, I'm not sure if I'll make a video on it. And they're all like, okay, cool. You know, be honest and upfront with them about how you're going to treat their product. Don't just scam them for free stuff. You know, a lot of these companies are tiny little companies because, you know, um, Sega aren't going to reach out to me and say, look, we need, we want you to promote the channel. They'll go after the big channels. So it's usually like the small indie developers um, that will come to me with their little indie games. And it's usually a really small team. So I'm not going to scam them out of a free copy. Generally speaking, if I say I'm going to make a video, you know, if I, if I say um, I will tell them that I'll make a video on it and I will follow through with that because you want to build up a good relationship with these guys. You know, it's really, really helpful. But and the main reason for sort of the main part of this section is as I want to cut, talk about Patreon and merchandise. Um, Patreon, if you don't know, there's Danny O'Dwyer because I support him on Patreon. Um, Patreon basically is a website that allows people to donate to you money in return for various different rewards on um, the site. Most of the time, the rewards tend to be, um, they, they're monetary rewards. So if it's $1 or more, $5 or more, $20 or more, etc., etc. Most of them seem to be, um, you know, for $1, you get a thank you. For 5 or $10, um, you'll get early access to my videos or you'll get, I'll follow you on Twitter or you'll get some little bonus on top of just getting a thank you. And then like maybe a $30 reward is that, you know, you'll get a t-shirt and you'll get access to special Patreon only streams and stuff like that. You can set it up any way you want possible, any way possible. You can set the levels to what exactly you want. My Patreon is quite different from other people's in that you basically don't get anything. And I know that sounds weird. And it's also very weird that I'm currently on $800 a month from giving people nothing um i'm all about like this open transparent honesty and i said from the start that i didn't want people with that supporting me on patreon to get any extra that somebody f that just loves my youtube channel couldn't get you know some 13 year old kid that watches my youtube channel he could be the biggest fan he could share every video he could like every video he could comment on every video he could watch every video entirety all the way through sits through all the ads but because he doesn't have access access to his mum's credit card and can't give me five dollars a month he misses out on some content me personally I just feel that's really, really unfair. So the way I've got mine set up is that any anybody that pledges anything always gets a shout out on my videos. And then anybody that pledges $5 or more gets uh, a little, their name in the credits. There's about 20 seconds at the end of each video that has the credits, like a movie credits with their job role, often made up silly job roles. And that's it. Like, um, I even created a, a $20 pledge and all it says is you don't get anything extra. Um, my idea initially is to go full time as a content creator, um, which YouTube ad revenue and then Patreon and merchandise will eventually allow me to do. And then once I grow past that, once I'm paying my way in life and paying me rent and me mortgage and feeding my dogs and stuff like that, then I want to create a community, like have a proper website with our own forum, our little spot on the internet for for like-minded people to hang out that's basically sort of my goal but like i said you can set up patreon however you like what i would suggest is you write a nice long bio about what it is you're doing what it is you plan to do i made a big speech here before i go on i would just like to say please do not donate if you cannot afford it there are much more important things in life than my youtube channel and if you are in any way sh short of money then use the money you have to look after yourself and your family first i just wanted to make it so clear that it's just an important, you know, it's it's just something that people can support me. If you've got a spare fiver and you want to help make my dreams become reality, then brilliant. What I then did was made a YouTube video basically explaining this in a bit more detail, which I then put on my YouTube channel. Um, so it links back um, and that's it. And then I don't really mention Patreon other than saying thank you to people that sign up and also just have a link to it in my uh, all my videos. But I don't read it out. I don't give the link every span the link anywhere. Just it's just there if people want to support me. And I think that's kind of important. I think that's why people have responded so well 
to my campaign is that because it's it's honest i'm not you don't get anything for it <laughs> it's purely for people that want to help me and and there's about 128 people that are crazy enough to do so um the final part of of sort of making extra money aside from youtube because one of the important things about youtube is that you have no control over analytics they could decide tomorrow to stop running advertisements on youtube and all these professional youtubers would be fucked because th- that's all their money gone so you can't rely on something you have no control over whatsoever but things like patreon things like merchandise other other ad- other revenue streams you can and you should use with Patreon, I would suggest getting to a decent size before starting um, because there's no point making a Patreon video when you're talking to four people and three of those are related to you. I would wait maybe until sort of four or 5,000 subscribers before thinking about making a Patreon video um, and starting a Patreon. Uh, the other thing, of course, is a bit of merch. There we go. There's my there was my first ever sort of proper bit of merch. Um So I just so there's two ways you can do merchandise. Most YouTubers use what's called drop shipping. And you'll see people use them their websites like Teespring and other websites where um I design I go onto Teespring, I design my website. So let's say I put my Loki Doki brand on a t-shirt and I get a special link to their website, um, teespring.com forward slash Loki Doki or whatever it is. And then I tell people about it. If you want to buy my shirt, buy my shirt. People go to that link, buy a shirt. I have nothing to do with the process whatsoever. That order then goes to Teespring. They print the shirt, send the shirt to the person, and then they'll give me a percentage of the money for that item. It's usually a much smaller amount. The other alternative is to do it yourself which is what I did here when I did these mugs um, uh, a few months ago. I basically bought 50 of these mugs uh, um, and sold them. They sold within like two hours or something ridiculous, so I had to buy another 50. But I just wanted it to be very limited edition, so there was no no more than 100. And we sold some mugs, and it was great fun. Um, I didn't do drop shipping because I like to control things myself because if they fuck something up, I'm out of the loop. I want to make sure that the person gets what they pay for. Like, for instance, a couple of the mugs turned up broken, but I'm I'm the they emailed me. I can fix it. Send them another one out. Job done straight away. No messing about. Obviously, the benefit of using things like Teespring and stuff is that you can design loads of stuff and not have to worry about trying to get the right amount of stock. Um, and then just you know sit back and and take of you know um the money. <clears throat> obviously you get a smaller percentage when using those drop shipping methods than you would if you bought them yourselves um but then there's a ton less hassle and that's why most youtubers choose to use it uh, another thing why you might do that is because early on when you don't know how many you're buying it was easy to do with mugs but let's say t-shirts okay how many t-shirts might i sell but then i've got to get them in like small medium large extra large extra extra large you're then buying five items and then what if all your people bought all the bigger ones but Nobody bought the small and you're sitting with loads of um, <clears throat> stock that you can't sell. So with T-shirts and stuff, I often find it's better to use those methods, the, the drop shipping methods. But um, it's a really good way. I would say, I, again, I would suggest if you're a smaller channel, I would suggest have not having a permanent shop. I would just do it limited edition to celebrate something. I think this is when we hit, was it 10,000 subscribers, I think? Um, I did that just a hundred mugs, bosh. I'm currently doing one at the moment or just about to start one for 15,000 subscribers. Um, and just do it for a few weeks or a limited amount. Um, the reason I like doing that is because that you're, you're not then sort of annoying people by telling them in every video, don't forget, buy my t-shirts and all that shit. It's just like a one-off. There we go. We got hundred when they're gone, they're gone. Um, and stuff like that and 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 I don't you know you, you have to be very careful when you're talking on YouTube about stuff like this is that you do at the end of the day somebody's watching my videos because they want to watch football manager so the more extra layers of stuff that I add 
There's going to be more people that are pissed off. Just get on with the video. You're talking about bloody Patreon and now you're talking about the mugs and now you're talking about the T-shirts and stuff like that. Is to keep it nice and clean. Um, eventually, when you get to a certain size, maybe 50,000, 100,000, I would, might have a shop that's just permanently open. But I just don't mention it. But it's just in my um, uh, description, just the link to the shop. Occasionally, I might wear, you know mention it or wear one of my own t-shirts and stuff like that um the last thing you can do um is something called an amazon wish list so on amazon it's like a sort of wedding list thing you basically go on amazon if you've got an account list all the stuff you'd want and then post it on twitter i kind of it's funny i kind of did this i saw someone else do it and i thought this would be funny um it's almost like window shopping because oh yeah i like that i like that i like that um, and I made a list of all sorts of random stuff and I didn't really say anything about it. I just put a link in my description and it became quite a thing. I've had tons of dog and cat treats sent to me that I had on my list. Um, hoodies, beanies, all sorts of stuff, which was really, really, really good fun. And like the, the I know everybody says this, but my followers, the fan, friends of my channel are just the craziest, generous, dis, dis, dis people on the planet earth and they, yeah they just they just go far above and beyond and are so crazily generous and you know that's all we're going to talk in a later video about building a community but i think that's part of it is building a community that's why i run lots of little competitions and stuff because i want to give back and i think we're building something really special here and i think that's what you try and have to foster on your own channel regardless of what the content is you can do it with any content is build up a really fun, friendly community where people are not only just talking to you, but talking to each other. I think that's the big goal. Right. There we go. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you got something out of that. So there we go, guys. Another video done. I hope you enjoyed it and got something useful out of it. If you have any questions on the subject we talked about in this video, then please leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, I'm also going to do a live Q&A at the end of this series on YouTube. So if you want to talk, um, have any more questions or want to go a bit more in depth or something we haven't talked about before, then make sure you join me on that stream. Also, subscribe if you're new. Um, also, you know, if you've got your own tips to share, put them in the comments. Let's help each other grow. You know, I'm not the world's expert of YouTube. I'm just showing you what I've learned. But if you've got your own tips and tricks, then please do leave them in the comments. Get involved and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much for joining me, guys. Love you all. Bye bye.